Hi everyone, this is Sanjay welcoming you to this uh, webinar sessions on uh, job skills mapping for uh, cloud computing. And uh, so today's agenda, as you can see, uh, we will talk about um, obviously to start with uh, broadly what is cloud computing and then uh, types of cloud computing models where we talk about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. And uh, some of you who are new to these aspects of uh, cloud would uh, already be consumers of these services as users, as developers, uh, but mostly as users, uh, if you're really not into cloud computing as of now. So you'll be surprised how uh, pervasive and widespread cloud is uh, in terms of its adoption, even today. And why cloud computing in 2020? That is very easy to answer. Uh, but again, uh, we'll further uh, explore this <laughs> cloud computing lifecycle applications uh, for which there is no dearth. Yeah, every, everything is uh, cloud driven nowadays. So, and learning path that is uh, going to be the focus, right? What, what, what do you need for to become a cloud professional? And we'll talk about the salary trends, which uh, I'm sure a lot of you would be um, <clears throat> interested in, right? So let's uh, first try to understand, okay, what is cloud computing? And I'll also give you a backdrop of uh, what the prospects are in terms of adoption, in terms of, uh, I would say, revenue, in terms of the global pie where we are headed so some useful data points we know to talk about them all right so let's try to first understand uh, what what is uh, cloud computing okay so uh, i'll try to put it uh, in as simple terms as possible okay so here you can see the definition uh, which is in a very simplified fashion talks uh, says uh, what cloud computing is but even more generally i would say cloud computing is a general term i would say for anything that involves delivering hosted services over the internet that is what it is okay so you have the pay as you go model so again uh, you consume some services you pay for it so you pay as much as you use it so it's a delivery of on-demand computing services from applications to storage and processing right typically over the internet and uh, it's a pay as you go model so in earlier times wh what used to happen uh, was uh, that you needed servers you needed a uh, lot of capacity planning so to say in terms of uh, infrastructure uh, procurement and uh, provisioning before you could roll out any kind of services today if you want to uh, let's say uh, a lot of startups have happened let's talk about uh, one of the big names marquee names which is i'm sure very popular with uh, all of us which is netflix okay so Netflix, uh, which is a Seattle-based uh, uh, on-demand streaming uh, player, I'm sure uh, at some point you, you guys would have used its services. Even if not, uh, then still you are aware, right? So it's one of the largest streaming, on-demand streaming uh, services. It's been there since the early part of 2000s. So when they started, um, their uh, operations they did not bother about any IT infrastructure even in those days so almost 20 years ago so they already had uh, uh, so Amazon is also Seattle based as you know Amazon is a the biggest uh, cloud provider right that we have in terms of market share so Amazon was a Seattle based company started as a book selling company then uh, kind of expanded into cloud services big time right uh, so netflix when it started its operation they did not uh, bother about it infrastructure 
and their whole business was around uh, IT infrastructure, right? Content. So, but how they will deliver content using IT infrastructure? So they used AWS from day one or day zero, I would say. And uh, you see how big a name that is. It's a household name. Uh, earlier, their services were uh, only in the US, then they expanded across geographies. I think it's a global uh, company now. So they started uh, from ground up as a cloud uh, company or as a startup, which was using cloud computing. So it's very easy to understand, right? So cloud enables uh, anyone to kind of get started in a matter of a few minutes to a couple of hours. So once you have an idea, once you know what you want to do, you can, uh, th that has led to mushrooming of so many startups globally in Silicon Valley, in India, in China, everywhere, right? Because it's become so easy. So we are in an era where uh, cloud computing has uh, really come to the fore. So we've seen what uh, cloud computing is. So let me expand on it a little more, okay? So, Cloud computing, uh, when we said uh, involved delivering hosted services over the in, in, internet, okay? So <clears throat> these services are uh, divided into three broad categories. So infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So we'll go uh, over in some details uh, as we move along our webinar or today's session. And then uh, you also have uh, the classification in terms of, uh, okay, there you go. Uh, infrastructure as a service. Uh, I was talking about like a cloud can be, so we'll come back to uh, these three main categories because we'll spend some time on this. But even before that, the cloud can be private or public, okay? So public cloud, uh, basically sells services to anyone through the internet. Whereas a pl private cloud is a proprietary network or a data center that uh, supplies hosted services to a limited number of, uh, or to a specific organization, I would say, okay. with certain access and uh, permissions. So regardless of whether uh, your cloud is public or private, the goal of cloud computing is to provide easy, scalable access to computing resources and IT services. That's the underlying thing. I hope you guys are getting. So a lot of you would already be uh, having some background and uh, all depends uh, what is your objective in terms of uh, in this session, obviously, it's all about the skills that uh, well, I'm not sure about uh, the background you carry, but uh, so I'm being uh, very generic and uh, also talking about some <clears throat> very general scenarios, okay, regardless of your background. So, those uh, who are uh, from IT or uh, they understand this space, uh, this is more of a kind of uh, <clears throat> a revision of uh, what they already know, but I will take a deep dive into some of these uh, aspects. So cloud infrastructure basically involves the hardware and software components required for implementation of a cloud computing model, okay? So when we talk about cloud, it can be, or cloud computing, it can be thought of as, a, uh, as utility computing or on-demand computing, okay? So that's in general, I would say about uh, <laughs> cloud computing, what we have, okay? Now let's talk, uh, let's look at the uh, different type of uh, cloud computing services. So we're going to talk about infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, and uh, software as a service. So you have uh, basically three uh, cloud service models, okay? 
So at the very base layer, let me show you this picture. Uh, this is uh, kind of very clear. You have uh, infrastructure, okay? On uh, <clears throat> so what you get when you subscribe to this kind of computing model or cloud computing model, you get uh, servers, storage, and the network, okay? Then <clears throat> you uh, so I'll talk about uh, the examples of. Uh, infrastructure as a service but then uh, let's let's get a broad understanding first on top of that you have platform as a service so you get uh, operating operating system and application stack okay <clears throat> in addition to what you already had in as part of uh, infrastructure as a service and then uh, finally you have software as a service so a lot of the services that we use, uh, for example, this uh, go to webinar that we are using or Zoom application, these are all software as a service, right? These are subscription based models at uh, most of the time. So we, we haven't built any communication software. We are just end users of uh, these services consuming, right? So Edureka has the subscription to go to webinar and through that uh, we are uh, having this uh, session okay so these are uh, some of the yeah. <clears throat> examples i would say now let's uh, try to understand so when we talk about uh, infrastructure as a service it is on demand or uh, pay as you go it infrastructure that you get uh, in terms of uh, your services so you get servers and uh, virtual machines you get storage you get networks you get uh, os from a cloud cloud provider pass or platform as a service uh, you get a on-demand environment for developing testing delivering and managing software applications so when you uh, subscribe to infrastructure as a service all you get is just the bare bone infrastructure right uh, which was which was basically your vms and the servers along with uh, storage but you still need a platform on top of that to build build your applications so uh, there are uh, so this also these categories also have evolved over time so initially when cloud computing started it was uh, infrastructure as a service uh, that was a big deal because uh, things had not uh, evolved and even now uh, some of the companies they prefer some of the organizations they just go for infrastructure they build the platform on top of that and then they also build the application stack okay so uh, to give you some uh, examples of uh, uh, infrastructure as a service you have aws which is a public cloud so within that you have elastic beanstalk okay so aws elastic beanstalk is uh, it, it's it's actually a, a, a platform actually in in fact so if you talk about uh, infrastructure there are a lot of the cloud providers they just uh, like if you use the alibaba cloud they provide elastic compute service that's uh, infrastructure you have host winds uh, there are a uh, whole variety but uh, it, it's not very uh, common to see it's basically the virtual machines in simple terms so for example the microsoft cloud azure cloud you have the azure virtual machine or digital ocean uh, if you guys have heard about it the droplets those are uh, that is a infrastructure as a cloud uh, or as a service uh, or google compute engine these are all your ec2 is basically nothing but uh, your instance okay elastic uh, compute cloud which is also known as ec2 it's a web service that provides resizable uh, compute capacity in the cloud okay 
that makes it uh, easier to make uh, web scale computing seamless for developers. So these are some of the examples of uh, infrastructure as a cloud. Now coming to platform as a service. Basically you get, you get a platform, okay? And then uh, you build your applications on top of that. So the Beanstalk uh, I was talking about, it, was, it is basically a platform, okay? It's, it's uh, one of the top uh, pass providers, right? Because um, again, it should not surprise anyone because it comes from AWS, which is uh, the leading cloud uh, provider that you have in terms of market share. So you can use uh, the uh, AWS uh, Elastic Beanstalk to deploy and run web apps developed using a variety of languages so it could be java based could be dotnet could be php ruby on rails node.js python these are some of the examples okay so you can upload your code using the easy to use tools uh, and aws elastic beanstalk handles everything else so that includes uh, deployment provisioning load balancing auto scaling so these are some of the things uh, that you would uh, kind of uh, really look at when building an application on the cloud, right? So Beanstalk is uh, one of them. Again, uh, you have Oracle Cloud Platform, you have, uh, again, from uh, all, all of the cloud providers, major ones, or even uh, if you look at Salesforce, which was a cloud-first company, again, into CRM, customer relationship management completely built on the cloud they also have a platform as a service you have uh, red hat which was acquired by uh, ibm a couple of years ago that has open shift platform as a service so you can build your own cloud stack so likewise there are uh, many others even ibm cloud cloud foundry and uh, some of those uh, they, they are basically nothing but your platform as a service. Next is uh, software as a service, which we are uh, pretty familiar with. So as I told you, like even we are using software as a service. So when you have a uh, good webinar or Zoom, uh, you have uh, email, right? You have any, any kind of email service. So basically we are all uh, social media sites, uh, Facebook and all. These are all uh, applications which have been developed. So we consume them. Some are paid, some are premium. It means initially they are free and then you have a premium model. And then uh, some are free, right? Which are monetized uh, differently, like social media sites and all. So software as a service, uh, it's again a method for uh, delivering software applications over the internet again on demand and uh, on a subscription basis right so a lot of the businesses are uh, SaaS based models so if you talk about any kind of uh, application software uh, toolkit it will be mostly a SaaS model so let's say if you talk about big data you have uh, something called uh, hadoop okay so uh, if you guys have heard about or are familiar with Hadoop, so there are different uh, distributions of Hadoop or uh, different uh, flavors of Hadoop, I would say. So Cloudera Hadoop is uh, the most popular. Now, when we talk about uh, Cloudera, <clears throat> they also offer uh, CDP, what they call uh, Cloud Data Platform, so, which is again a subscription-based model, right? Likewise, any kind of computing you do, uh, let's say talk about company like Snowflake. Snowflake is a data warehousing provider on the cloud, which recently got listed on NASDAQ uh, three months ago, became famous because uh, Warren Buffett invested in it. If you guys follow the news and uh, the investment uh, themes that are there around. So Snowflake is again a cloud provider. 
most of the big companies that you see in the tech space, Shopify, right? Most of them, Zoom, all, all of these uh, companies, they are SaaS companies. So we've talked about a lot of them, right? Uh, all the social media companies, uh, your LinkedIn's, the <clears throat> Facebooks, and uh, Google. All all of these, uh, they have offerings uh, which are SaaS based. So when I talk about Google, it's not the search I'm talking about. They have a lot of other products like. They have TensorFlow for deep learning. If you want to kind of, uh, it's obviously an open source uh, product, but uh, there are offerings uh, in terms of uh, when you want to productionize stuff, uh, when you build something. A lot of these are, uh, or most of these are based on the SaaS model or a subscription model. Now, uh, let's talk about why. Uh, cloud computing now okay so in fact um, i'll give you some additional data points apart from what you see here so it spending if you see continues to shift to public cloud computing so that that is creating a huge opportunity for uh, it leaders to enable digital business transformation which means a lot of jobs lot of opportunities in the cloud space so for example um, as per the latest uh, gartner uh, research more <clears throat> by in the next uh, two to three years i would say by 2023 or even 24 for more than 45 percent of the it spending on system infrastructure uh, software infrastructure application software and business process outsourcing will shift from traditional solutions to cloud. So if you would have noticed, there were uh, big powerhouses uh, not so long ago, companies like Oracle Corporation, companies like SAP, which were very dominant in the business uh, software space, uh, companies like IBM. Not to say they are not, uh, but uh, their market share has uh, gone down dramatically because uh, there were other companies who came in and started providing uh, solutions uh, with cloud as the backbone. So they've taken a lot of the market share and this is increasingly the theme. So that has led to two things. Uh, one is proliferation of uh, niche cloud players and uh, the companies which have existed. Like if you look at uh, Microsoft, it's a big turnaround story, but because of cloud. So it was in the business of uh, the of Microsoft Office and all these were uh, productivity uh, tools, right? So it was uh, always, uh, Microsoft Office and the licensing, but now everything you see is on the cloud, right? So even Microsoft Office, uh, as you guys, uh, the recent versions you would have seen last few years, they've been kind of rolled out on the cloud. Nobody installs them any, uh, anymore. So even if you use Outlook or so that, that, that has seen a marked uh, change in terms of <clears throat> preferences, uh, in terms of the infrastructure that uh, companies have from traditional IT to cloud-based. And uh, obviously the proportion of IT spending that is being allocated to cloud uh, has further accelerated in the aftermath of uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis. So uh, you can see 59% of uh, enterprise expect cloud usage to exceed prior plans due to COVID-19, right? So, the spend on uh, public cloud has gone up dramatically. It has gone really vertical. So that, that's the big uh, theme, I would say, for the next few years. There's, uh, mo most of the successful companies uh, you see in any of, so if you have a HR solution, nobody buys uh, software in the traditional way uh, that they used to. So for example, ERP was, ERPs were very uh, kind of well entrenched in terms of how businesses were uh, using software. 
to power their businesses. But now even ERPs uh, are uh, on the cloud. So some of the companies which started a few years ago, they've taken a huge market share from SAP, from uh, Oracle Corporation and others. So that, that's the big the thematic change, I would say, in terms of uh, IT infrastructure that has happened. So you can see uh, in terms of the projection, how the cloud computing market size is expected to grow. And again, these are very, very conservative estimates, I would say. The projections uh, will overshoot. And uh, you have uh, industry-wise or sector-wise uh, backup in terms of uh, how the different uh, industries will use uh, cloud computing as the cornerstone of uh, access, I would say, in the coming years. So this decade anyway, we'll see a lot of big bang uh, transformations and it is all accelerated uh, because of the pandemic and uh, the way things have uh, shaped up. So even if you see work from home, which was uh, a privilege of the few has become very widespread, right? Because uh, you really don't need uh, that kind of infrastructure. Everything is uh, pay as you go or uh, cloud-based model. So that has really <clears throat> accelerated the adoption of uh, cloud. Even uh, when we talk about work from home or working remotely, that has really taken off big time. So linearly, we would have taken maybe another five years or 10 years to get where we are. Unfortunately, because of this huge accident, I would say, in, in the form of this pandemic, uh, this has really accelerated the adoption many times over. When we talk about uh, cloud computing life cycle, it entails everything that you would need in terms of, uh, of building an application and rolling out uh, successfully. So, uh, for example, let's uh, talk about uh, any e-commerce site or e-commerce e app like AWS, or uh, Amazon rather, or uh, Flipkart or any other. So, the, if you see, you can do shopping dip, um, regardless of where, which part of the world you are, right? If, if you are uh, having Amazon app, you can shop uh, virtually around the clock regardless of uh, which part of the world or uh, which geography you are in. And you, you would see the pricing also keeps on changing. Every hour they have uh, new, it's all uh, algorithm driven or machine learning driven. The prices, the products that they have, uh, a lot of it is kind of dynamic. How is that happening? Because uh, in the background or the i would say more more appropriately the backbone is really cloud computing so one of the key aspects where uh, it has gone a marked uh, uh, i would say change over the last decade is in terms of release management now what is release management so you have uh, everything running in production right these uh, apps that you access through your mobile phones or uh, your uh, laptop or any kind of computing device, those are uh, real-time uh, apps, right? Uh, with transactions happening round the clock. So uh, just think of it like uh, 20 years ago, who would have thought you could do banking at uh, midnight or uh, in the middle of the night you remember something and you have to make a payment and now even with uh, upi with uh, google pay with paypal with a lot of the things that you have these things did not exist in, even a decade ago uh, not to mention two decades ago which is not too far right so some of them yes uh, paypal and all but i'm just saying uh, these things have evolved big time but uh, now it's so easy all the businesses are 24 by 7 powered by IT infrastructure. So I was talking about release management to give you an example The pricing of the products keeps on changing 
based on the algorithm that uh, these e-commerce sites have so what they are doing is basically they are doing a release on demand this release i'm talking about is after release in production okay so earlier when you had to make releases you had to plan well in advance so there were monthly uh, release cycles at most large enterprise so i have worked with a lot of the uh, global uh, top 10 banks where we used to have a release calendar ahead of time so typically at the end of november or early december we used to get uh, as part of the development team and maintenance team we would get a, a release calendar for 2021 so it will say okay january this date mostly a weekend or uh, after friday you will have your deployments in production then do all the testing over the weekend so that when the users come in on monday they don't face any issues now you are doing release on demand you, you can't afford downtime you will be out of business right because the competition is uh, like that everybody is uh, doing things 24 by 7. Uh, think of it like uh, when things were completely in the physical world right we used to do banking during the banking hours so if if, if it's uh, the bank uh, closes its operations let's say at uh, three o'clock or four o'clock you, you you can't withdraw money you cannot uh, you, you cannot uh, transfer money you cannot uh, do any of the banking stuff now there is no uh, restriction or there are no constraints right because uh, you can still bank even though the uh, physical uh, branch is closed where you have an account it doesn't matter right you can do it on a sunday you can do it on a holiday uh, so th that's what uh, has become possible because of uh, the way it infrastructure and provisioning has uh, changed and again led by cloud computing so hopefully you guys have a uh, here big picture in terms of uh, how things have uh, really evolved over the last uh, few years or especially during the last decade so primary driver has been cloud computing from an infrastructure perspective okay so when we talk about this uh, picture here that you see on my screen which is about uh, cloud computing life cycle you can kind of have it entails everything right what kind of hardware you need what kind of storage you need what kind of uh, compute you need right so basically there are two things to it and you want to uh, one is storage right so because we're talking about data which quickly gets into the realm of big data everything is big data now even if you are a startup or you are an old-fashioned organization the kind of data that is being generated through variety of uh, uh, channels like there is machine generated data there is social media data there is enterprise data there is uh, transactional data right so there is a data deluge so you need storage mechanism so that's where this big data infrastructure comes into play and it's so easy to provision on the cloud so with aws with azure with google cloud what you can do it just takes a couple of minutes to spin off uh, spin an instance and then uh, have your servers and uh, big data infrastructure provision in a matter of a few minutes you are up and running right so you need uh, once you have the infrastructure then you need the firepower basically the compute so you have a lot of the compute services also as part of your cloud offering so basically all this define the network set up security services these are all part of infrastructure as a service which we talked about in earlier slides define the management process and tools everything that is so either it will be part of infrastructure as a service platform as a service and if you are using a SaaS model then you're just an end user so even the application stack is there right so but let's say if you're just getting pass or platform as a service like google compute engine 
then you basically need to build your application you need to do your testing everything kind of reporting dashboarding that is what analytics refers here and then uh, you have a lot of uh, ml services now which are also becoming part of the uh, cloud stack so for example something like auto ml is uh, uh, has really been a big driver of uh, gcp adoption gcp is our google cloud platform so you have SageMaker in aws you have a uh, lot of the ml services as part of azure so all cloud providers have uh, data service uh, data services uh, machine learning uh, components which you can uh, use um, at scale cloud computing applications the applications galore so you, you, everything is uh, on the cloud so there is no dearth of uh, applications so anything that you see so storing uh, file online data backup and recovery so simple terms e-commerce application business processes every, everything is uh, powered by cloud right so we talked about gmail uh, we talked about uh, google chrome all, all these are uh, so everything is on the cloud right the storage that you have uh, this brings us to the uh, key, key focus area for this uh, webinar okay so again uh, cloud is a well entrenched uh, kind of uh, space i would say this offers a uh, lot of opportunity but again you need to be really really clear in terms of uh, what space uh, or what kind of uh, career path you want to have okay so uh, depending on your background it, it all uh, depends like if you are from a database background from a non-it background or within it or from application development background but uh, broadly i will say uh, so th there are two paths okay uh, th there could be potentially many different roles and this keeps on evolving right so you, typically either uh, when you start off you will be a cloud engineer or a cloud architect again cloud architect you will take some time to reach that stage because you need to be well versed with uh, you need to be a specialist right even with the uh, uh, cloud engineer role as well but broadly i would talk about these two themes so uh, cloud engineer uh, who's he or she right uh, is basically an it specialist who handles all cloud computing duties which include uh, planning designing deployment maintenance support right again you'll have experience in developing and designing uh, cloud based web services and um, cloud architect is uh, for deploying and overseeing a company's uh, cloud computing strategy so you do the architecture and uh, you see what works uh, optimally for your organization and uh, scalability perspective as well so there are many aspects i'm just trying to make it concise and make it easy to understand obviously uh, when we go into details there is a lot that that is uh, behind the hood so when you are a cloud uh, architect when you talk about cloud computing strategy that includes cloud adoption plans cloud application design cloud management monitoring many of the things okay so when you talk about the uh, career in cloud computing it could be multiple things so one of the things i touched upon was uh, just now i talked about the big data stack right so if you are good in data services that is how i will uh, classify it so if you are uh, keen on data services you you have a lot of the components available on all the cloud platforms that are on offer so you you, you could be a good web developer right you could be in uh, web services and api development now you you could uh, definitely uh, take up that role so let's say we talk about uh, react angular a lot of the front end skills a lot of the back end skills if you see the number one uh, that you see here on my screen 
database skills. So if you are a database administrator, you are a database developer. So cloud computing has uh, something in it for uh, everyone. Uh, okay. So regardless of your background, and even if you don't have an IT background, it's not a big deal because it's it's a learning something as a user of it. So let's say if, uh, somebody has never used uh, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint presentation or uh, Word document. Do you think it is uh, really difficult? Yeah, to know the features, you need to give it time. You need to make maybe hundreds of documents over the next few years. Your proficiency will be very high. Working with Excel and all these uh, because you don't have to build that. Microsoft already did for you, right? Same way Amazon, uh, Google, and uh, many others, Microsoft and all, or DigitalOcean, they've already kind of given you what you need. So all you need to do is basically think in terms of what you want to build. You should have a concept and uh, more from an IT perspective. That was more, more from a business perspective. But uh, from an IT perspective, you need to know what your interests are. So if you have, are strong in the database side, there is something in it for you, definitely. So you can do cloud administration, you can do, there are a lot of uh, cloud monitoring services and people specialize in uh, different aspects, right? So when we talk about uh, cloud security, it's a big deal because uh, Security, if your cloud implementation is not secure, you're going to run into problems, right? If you're good in programming, then obviously it opens up a lot of avenues. So, because you need to be well-versed with how you will implement things using the cloud infrastructure. So if you are strong in, I would say, networking skills, or uh, operating system, uh, more of, uh, I would say, network guy or the desktop guy. Um, you have, again, a lot going on for you, right? In terms of uh, virtual machines, in terms of provisioning. So th there is something in it for everyone. So uh, definitely you need to figure out what your core competency is, or even if you're new, then you need to figure out what your interests could be, what could potentially interest you rather, okay? So cloud does offer uh, a lot in terms of uh, learning. So database skills, though it talks about, uh, your, it talks about MySQL as a database, you, you could have any kind of uh, background. You could, I, I talked about Hadoop uh, earlier, but I would say this is more of uh, data services, which is a big space, I would say. That is the most compelling space, uh, if you ask me as of now, because uh, all things data, from data lineage to data governance, to data engineering, to platform engineering, to uh, data science, which is, ML, big data, all, all of these things fall in this space. When we talk about programming, there is no limit, right? Uh, obviously, the state of the art uh, uh, paradigms that you have within programming, um, you have Python, you have R, you have Java, you have yeah, everything, all the stack is uh, there. The cloud providers have so you need to be proficient in terms of using cloud when you build your applications. Operating system, again, uh, Linux, obviously the flavors of uh, Linux are very, very common. Networking skills, uh, we already talked about it, right? Virtual machines and uh, the underlying hypervisor. And uh, so as you kind of, uh, take baby steps into the world of cloud computing, you will get familiarity with all these terms. So I, I don't want to overwhelm you guys with jargon and all, right? So these are uh, the prominent uh, cloud service providers. I've mentioned them a few times, Microsoft, AWS, and GCP, along with OpenStack. Mm -hmm. 
So web, web services, again, uh, you have SOAP, you have WSDI, UDDI. So let's talk about, uh, so I've talked about this cloud uh, software engineer and these are indicative salaries. Again, uh, this all depends on a variety of factors, but all we are trying to highlight here is uh, you have a good career path, which has uh, longevity, which has uh, durability and sustainability because uh, things are changing very rapidly. So again, uh, for a cloud software engineers, again, uh, you need to be good in programming. You need to be good with uh, web services, with uh, a thing called APification, right? which is what we are highlighting here, APIs. You need to understand how you make calls from uh, one application to another to fetch data. Because it's a data-driven world, right? Cloud migration. So this is, again, a very, uh, there is a lot of demand because I would say even, uh, not even 30% of the enterprises have moved to the cloud. Still a big journey lies ahead of us. So from on-prem uh, infrastructure, there are uh, companies who are migrating to the cloud. So you could be a specialist in migration. There is a huge demand for uh, somebody who would uh, come with migration experience. So you had those uh, earlier databases, they are moving to cloud or uh, even from on-prem, let's say big data infrastructure, you want to move to cloud infrastructure. A lot of work is happening in this space. And DevOps is another uh, big theme. DevOps, I have already talked about some aspects of it without naming it, right? Release uh, on demand. That's a DevOps uh, concept or a practical way of uh, doing things. So earlier what you had was uh, companies had a development and operations team. Now it's kind of uh, very seamless. Uh, so to say, so you you don't uh, really need to uh, think and bother about uh, your planning your development and uh, infrastructure provisioning. That happens on the fly, especially with the advent of Docker and uh, Kubernetes and a lot of these uh, uh, new age, so to say, uh, softwares or the mechanisms that we have in terms of infrastructure provisioning, it's it's become very, very simple. Click off a, a button and you get started at least, right? So DevOps, uh, cloud DevOps is uh, in huge, huge demand, I would say. And as you can see, the salaries and all are uh, fantastic, actually, if you uh, kind of uh, grow in this area, right? So a lot of uh, uh, a big theme is automation. So there, that is where uh, your cloud DevOps uh, will fall. We talked about uh, cloud application developer, right? So you need to be again very good with programming skills. So that's the core of it. And the way you learn it is uh, taking a plunge, right? Embracing it. So the more you practice, it's it's about like any other skill. The more you do it, the better you get at it. In terms of, we talked about the cloud administrator as well, right? So again, cloud administration, which includes monitoring, security, a lot of the cloud infrastructure, uh, which will come under your purview if, uh, if you are a cloud administrator. Cloud automation, this is a big theme, obviously. This is huge. You should try to get into this space. Okay. So automation is a big, big theme because why it's a big theme? Because it uh, amounts to dollar savings, right? When you automate something, you eliminate a lot of the manual effort. That itself results in a big cost saving. Automation is a big theme. Innovation is another big theme. So these are the two themes that you should look at. These are kind of intertwined. Cloud network engineer, again, uh, very, very important, right? So we're talking about cloud security, uh, cyber security, a lot of the things. And again, as a next level, you have the cloud security manager. 
cloud architect we have uh, talked about you can see the kind of uh, expected salary ranges or uh, when you have this kind of skill it's it's uh, amazing the career path that you have it's it's just not about the monetary part it is the joy of uh, building something which uh, has widespread adoption think of uh, engineers at google and amazon and microsoft when they see uh, that the kind of uh, the patch of code that they have in production it is in use by hundreds and thousands or millions of users around the world right that, that that's the beauty of uh, working at uh, hale and cloud definitely gives you doesn't doesn't matter you have to work at google or facebook even with small setups you, your outreach can be really huge we talked about cloud engineer roles as well right so <clears throat> this is uh, what we had to share in terms of uh, the job skill mapping or uh, essentially what what opportunity lies ahead of you if you want to make a transition or a switch to cloud computing how what does it entail what does it take what are the different things uh, that you have <clears throat> within the cloud computing space then uh, we talked about uh, some of the areas where uh, cloud computing is being used it is being used uh, obviously in a very broad based manner but uh, some of the thematic plays some of the industry adoptions the numbers <clears throat> sharing with you guys in terms of uh, what lies ahead of us all right see you then bye bye